Welcome to another episode of Bowcast, brought to you by Full Moon Productions and Bowcast.com. This is the podcast with the new school archer in mind. Bowcast covers everything from tips, techniques, and archery technology that will help raise your success in the field. And now, here are your hosts covering the straight shot, Anthony and Anil. There in Bowcast world. My name is Neil Roney. I'm joined today with Matt Hoke from Sportsman's Warehouse here at the Littleton, Colorado store. And today, as you may have seen on the blog, this is the result of my last day out in the field. Not a not a good thing to happen to you in the field. So what we're going to do today is Matt's going to take us through checking this bow out now that the strings derailed and broke, and look at some of the troubleshooting that we could do to prevent this from ever happening to you. And then we'll actually get into uh, putting the bow in the press and actually restringing this bow. A lot of you folks out there may hand that over to a pro to do. We're going to give you a little insight on what actually goes on once the bow's in the press to get the string restrung. So Matt, if you're ready to rock. Yep, ready to rock. Let's do it. Uh, right. You know, just to recap, uh, Anil in the field had a problem with his bow. His uh, string derailed uh, either during a draw cycle or shortly after a shot. Um, it's hard to diagnose without actually seeing it happen. but. Uh, First thing we want to do is troubleshoot why this happened so it doesn't happen again. You know, we could put a couple hundred dollars into new strings and it happened again. So, uh, you know, a few things it could have been is some debris in the cam track that may have gotten stuck and derailed the string. Uh, could have been prior damage. Um, could have been short knocking where you don't actually completely knock your arrow knock onto the string to where the string is not transmitting all the energy to the arrow to absorb that energy. So there's a, there's a bunch of things out there that could have made this happen, but uh, you just want to give a good physical, visual inspection of the entire bow to make sure that there's nothing else wrong. We do before we put it into the bow press is you want to relieve tension off of the limbs. You don't want to press a fully uh, loaded limb. So we are going to loosen the limb locking screws and just about a half turn on those. Just going to loosen those limbs up. Some bows have locking screws, some don't. Um, your higher end bows usually have one to two limb locks. After that, we are going to release some of the tension off the limb, and that is done with the limb bolt. And we want to do even turns on each limb. Okay, the bow's in the press now. Uh, we're going to press the bow to, because uh, obviously when the string broke, it expanded out to its full length. Uh, so we need to bring that in to where we can uh, get the rest of the damaged string off. The key on. things is to, before this happens, is getting a good visual inspection of the camp. Um, you know, if the string was still on here, where the string begins and ends, uh, knowing your control cable. Uh, split bus cable, this is a ram and a half cam uh, that uses a uh, string, control cable, and a split bus. So knowing where those points of origin and where they end, how they cross, you know, below the uh, cable guard, all those are important things to get in your bow back into shooting. So you know, we've inspected the bow, uh, we've inspected the limbs, limbs look fine, cams look fine, we don't see any bent uh, axles or anything like that, uh, but we have noticed that his string and uh, the string was definitely damaged, uh, but the control cable and the bus cable have also been damaged, so we're going to replace those. And what Anil did is when he went to his winner's choice string that he purchased last spring, he saved his original string cable and uh, bus cable. Uh, and you know, one of the key things is he left it set up. He left the string loop on it, he left the tie in points for his peep sight. So this is all going to make it real quick and easy to get him back in action a lot faster because uh, there's no other measuring um, not set which if peep sight is already tied in um, we just got to put it back in and it's going to be in the right position the string on the majority of bows a little extra piece there is the actual string of the bow is going to go along the outside diameter and what we're going to do here um, and that may have been part of the problem is some debris in the cam track and if and you once come in here, you can see there's some roughage and uh, some dirt in there. And we're going to clean that out before we uh, progress any further. Yeah. Uh, 
this is where it becomes a little bit difficult when you have a bow that come completely unstrung and not knowing the exact uh, axle to axle length. You want to get this cam rotation all right. You know, make it a lot easier in the end to uh, to get the bow strung. So that was the string. Next we are going to do the split bus cable and your split bus cable is what um, begins on the limbs of the top of the bow and is going to go to the bottom cam. Okay, now that we got everything, uh, the string, cable, bus cable all uh, connected back on, we want to make sure that the loops are completely around all these posts. We don't have something that is uh, not you know, completely in the track. Uh, make sure everything's lined up and hooked up correctly. Put a little bit of tension on the string to hold it in place. And we are going to relieve the tension slowly. And we have a strong bow. Once again, before we even draw it, we're going to make sure that everything is still lined up completely in the tracks. All the loops are on the post. And we're strung up. Cool. So there you have it. We went through, Matt was able to take us through actually putting the bow in the press and restringing the bow. Um, a lot of details to see in there, but at least this gives some of you folks out there who maybe haven't seen that process before an idea of what goes on. We did some visual inspection. Matt uh, ran through some things that we can talk through uh, or look for before we actually get in the field and it's real important. Um, for those of you who have seen the blog, I missed the chance at a really nice buck um, and it may have been something I could have caught beforehand. So with that, I want to thank both Matt Hogue from Sportsman's uh, as well as the Littleton, Colorado store here. And on the next uh, video cast that we do, we're going to actually now take this bow that I have my back backup string on and actually go through the paper tuning process so you can all see that. So. Matt, looking forward to that. Thanks again yeah, for your we'll time. Yeah, we'll get you out and hopefully get you hunting again for the season close. All right, later everyone. We at Bowcast would love to hear from you. You can email Anthony and Anil directly at info at bowcast.com. For more information, visit and contribute to the Bowcast blog at www.bowcast.com. On behalf of the entire BOCAST team, thanks for listening, good luck in the field, and keep those arrows flying straight.